thank you to the Vaticuri Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Bandari. It's been a, a really interesting week, uh, traveling uh, to many centers in India, um, having great food, <laughs> spending some great time with great people. Um, so uh, in the next day or two, I'll be talking somewhat about my research, somewhat about my clinical uh, aspect. Um, I'm uh, Kwok Zian Trin. I'm a urologist at Brigham Women's Hospital and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Uh, those are hospitals affiliated to Harvard Medical School where my academic affiliation is. Um, and uh, for this first talk, I'm going to talk a lot about more of my research. And uh, I do a lot of research on public health and health inequity. And in the United States, race is obviously a big uh, topic uh, over there. So uh, these are my disclosures. So. Uh, most of you know uh, race is a quite contentious issue in the United States. There's a lot of discussion about race, uh, the movement called Black Lives Matter, uh, the long history of racial tension in the United States. And uh, in the world of medicine, race is also a big issue in the United States. Um, because there are many differences in survival across cancers between individuals who are white and individuals who are black or African American. If you look at different cancers, and this is a paper we published in Cancer a couple of years ago, you'll see that there are differences in survival between black and white patients, but it's much more pronounced in some cancers compared to others. What's also interesting is that the two cancers where the differences are the most prevalent, which is prostate and breast cancer, we know that there's an explanation for breast cancer because there, there's a difference in expression of estrogen receptors between African American women and white women. Whereas for prostate cancer, there are some studies, but those studies are not that clear cut. And it's hard to believe that all this difference is related purely to biology. The other issue is that if you look at the data, and this is the same paper that we published, you'll see that there has been an improvement over time in the differences between races, but not for some reason between African American and white patients. These differences are now more pronounced than they were before, which is quite concerning because you would think that with improvements in healthcare and Obamacare giving more insurance to uh, underserved populations, you would expect that those differences are getting better, but instead are getting worse. The, um, the other thing that I really want to highlight here, and this really shows the uphill battle that people like me who do this kind of research have to face, this is from a pretty prominent con medical conference, uh, prostate cancer conference that we have in the US. And this is a slide that somebody presented, the top slide. And they showed that on the left, he said, that per presenter said, look, this is where most of the mortality for prostate cancer is. So whatever you see in red is where there's the most mortality for prostate cancer in the US. Now, if you look on the right, that's the distribution where there are more African-American men in the United States. And then the presenter said, look, the maps are pretty similar, so we need to understand the genetic components of African-American men in those regions. And as our president liked to use that word, I think this is like fake news, because the reality is that I don't think that this is related to some genetic differences in African-Americans in those areas. It's probably much more to do with the fact that there are access to care issues and that we call this an issue of race, or some people say it's an issue of race, but it's probably more an issue of access to care, income inequality, education inequality. If, uh, and, and just to give you an example, and you know, the truth is in the data. If you look at the data on prostate cancer, you see where all the mortality for prostate cancer is the worst. And if you look for pancreatic cancer, it's pretty similar. You know, the same region, the southeast, seems to have much more uh, mortality for pancreatic cancer. And if you go on to breast cancer, it looks almost the same. And even for cardiovascular disease, which has nothing to do with cancer, this map looks the same. And I can go on like this for half an hour, or I can show you the map for stroke, hypertension, cancers, obesity. There, there are pockets in the population of the United States where there are more healthcare issues and more mortality. And I don't think that this is an issue of race, but it's an issue that is much uh, more complex than that. So there's a lot of evidence on racial differences in prostate cancer care. Uh, like I said, not the genetic component, but the access to care component. And really quickly, because this is a short presentation, there's a difference in PSA screening. African-American men, uh, elderly African-American men, are less likely to get a PSA test in the 2000 to 2010 era. 
if they are supposedly having worse prostate cancer, they should be screened more often, right, rather than being screened less. When they actually have an abnormal PSA test, and this is part of the randomized trial, the PLCO trial, if you remember that trial between systematic PSA screening versus no PSA screening. So those of them on this trial that had an abnormal PSA, they were less likely, African American were less likely to get a follow-up biopsy or a follow-up PSA, which is a serious problem, right? These people are on a trial, their PSA is high, they're supposed to have a biopsy or repeat PSA, but for some reason they're not getting that follow-up test. Imagine outside of a trial. And then if they do have prostate cancer, it seems that African American men are less likely to be treated. And if you think the treatment for prostate cancer is useful, and I think most of you in the room here would agree, uh, you know, if they're less likely to be treated, then ultimately I'm sure there will be consequences in terms of survival rates for prostate cancer. And what's also really interesting is that the more, the worse the cancer is, the less likely an African American is gonna get treatment for prostate cancer. Because a lot of us would say, well, you know, low risk prostate cancer, you don't need to treat. But even in those who have serious prostate cancer, they are much more likely to not get treated uh, in African American men. So how do we close this gap? And obviously we can do a lot of research and spend billions of dollars on biology and trying to find some sort of magic genetic difference that somehow we can treat. And although I'm sure a lot of people are spending time on that, that's not the focus of my research. So I'm gonna talk more about the other factors and give you some examples. Um, there are system level factors, you know, access to care. Can you provide equal access? Would that lead to equal care and equal outcomes? There are patient level factors. Uh, I do some research on that, but it's much more complex. It's cultural differences. For example, some people may believe that their cancer is meant to be, and as a result, you can't interfere with God, and, as, you know, and, and, and therefore, they would rather not treat. There are, so these cultural differences, you have to work with them, uh, but it is something that is a little bit harder to study, uh, and I'm not gonna talk as much as part of this presentation. What I do am extremely interested in is provider level factors, because if it's not system level and it's not patient factors, then it comes down to provider as in physician or hospital factors. And most of us would say, well, we're not racist. So hopefully the majority of people are not racist, but there's certainly a phenomenon called implicit bias, where although you think that you're treating everybody equally, it is quite possible that you may treat different people of different race or different income or different education in a different manner, and ultimately that will have an impact on their care. Um, so uh, this is a slide that I like to present a lot. And uh, in countries that are not the US, who have probably a more objective view of American healthcare, uh, this is not surprising. But when I show this to Americans, they're always quite surprised to see this data. This is a question, this is published in New England Journal of Medicine. And they ask people, did you have a medical problem that you did not seek care because of money issues? And this extremely rarely happens in most Western world countries. I'm actually a native Canadian, and as can, you can see here, not a lot of Canadians said yes to this question. But in the US, unfortunately, nearly half of individuals in the US will have a situation in a given year where they decide not to seek care because of the expense. And I think that is a serious problem, and ultimately this will have an impact and explains why, for example, the US uh, life expectancy is actually going down instead of improving. So one of the ways that you can reduce disparities or differences is potentially by improving access to care. And that was the goal of Obamacare. And um, for you, those of you who are not familiar with Obamacare, this is a piece of legislation that Barack Obama passed in 2010. But it's not really simple. It's not like we just gave health insurance publicly to a lot of people. It's a really complicated piece of law uh, because you have to get you know, a support from the Congress, support from the Senate to get this all together that provides insurance through different ways. One way is, for example, increasing coverage for Medicaid. Medicaid is the insurance in the United States for the poor. So if you increase the threshold uh, of revenue that you are covered by Medicaid, then you obviously will increase the number of people who are covered by, uh, in the United States. So the data on equity of care and access, uh, there's actually a lot of data from the military. I do a lot of research closely with the military in the US. And what we find in the military is that Everybody in the US military has the same care. If you are white, you are black, you are rich, you are poor, you have access to military hospitals like Walter Reed. 
And what's interesting is that in the military setting, there's no difference between African American and whites in terms of their outcomes, in terms of delay to care, in terms of rate of treatment. So the question asked to ask is that, well, maybe if you provide equal access to everybody regardless of race, you would potentially have the same outcomes. This is a paper we published in JAMA Oncology two, two, and a half, two years ago. And this is among individuals who are covered by Medicare. So in the United States, when you get to the age of 65, everybody is covered. So at 64, you have to find your own insurance, you have to have employment insurance, you reach 65, you are poor, rich, everybody is covered by Medicare. So in a setting of Medicare patients who have surgery, what's really interesting to see is that there's no difference in mortality, mortality between black and white patients. And the editorialist who wrote a paper alongside this article of ours said, well, there's two explanations. One, which I hope is true, is that when you provide equal care by providing equal insurance to black and white patients, you don't see a difference anymore. And I hope to some degree that is true. But you also have to consider the alternative, which is that prostate cancer is the disease that we often die with rather than die from. And if you're only looking at people who are 65 and above, maybe you don't see the kind of difference that you see in younger patients. Um, this is to, work, to follow that work, and this is a paper that we published just a couple of months ago, which was named by the Prostate Cancer Foundation as one of the most provocative papers of the year. And what we did is that on the left is that graph where you show that African-American patients, and this is the line in red, have worse survival compared to white patients. But what's really interesting is that when you start accounting for access to care, for treatment, and also disease at presentation, because one thinks that African-American are less get, likely to get screened and therefore present with more advanced disease. But when you account for all these factors, that difference gets smaller and smaller to the point where the curves actually flip and that African-American patients actually have slightly better outcomes than white when you account for all these factors. And I think this graph really potentially demonstrates that this theory that it's more about access to care than actual biology that people often uh, invoke. If you do a deeper dive in the data that says that African American patients have worse survival, and this is from the SEER data, because SEER is the largest cancer registry in the United States. It covers 28% of the country. Uh, and this is all the data when everybody keeps saying that African American have worse survival, it's always based on SEER data. But if you cut the SEER data into individual registries, because you can actually do that, you can look at different registries and see the difference, the reality is that one registry, the registry of Atlanta, is driving the difference between African American and white patients. When you aggregate everything, the difference is, so, is still significant, but it's basically because Atlanta has such a big difference that it drives all the other registries to show that there is a difference between black and white patients. And this, I think, really tells us that maybe we need to concentrate on Atlanta and understand what is different in Atlanta compared to other parts of the United States to explain why blacks have so poor survival for prostate cancer. And if you go back to the slide that I showed you earlier about mortality for prostate cancer, remember that area that was pretty red? Well, that area is where Atlanta is, which really corresponds to the theory that I am presenting today. So, um, so where do we go from here? Um, this is work from Joel Weissman. Joel Weissman is a colleague of mine at Harvard School of Public Health, Center for Surgery and Public Health that I work really closely with. He's been a mentor of mine and now a colleague. And he issued a theory a long time ago about race differences in outcomes. And we call it, he calls it the between Witten uh, hypothesis. Either African American are systematically discriminated at every single hospital, and that's why they have worse outcomes. So they can go to the best hospital and have terrible outcomes, they can go to the worst hospital and have terrible outcomes. That's one hypothesis. The other hypothesis is that for whatever reason, African American patients are all going to the same institutions, those institutions provide worse care, and then all the white people are going to a different institution, and those institutions have better outcomes, and that is why you find that mismatch in outcomes. So uh, we put together a grant that we submitted to the NIH uh, to try to explore that relationship a little bit further, and we have started doing some of that work. And this is a paper that actually, and this just got published in Journal of Urology actually three weeks ago, and it actually gives some corroboration to that theory. Uh, 
So when you look at hospitals where a lot of minorities are being treated, and we call them in this project minority-serving hospitals, you find that at minority-serving uh, hospitals, independently of race, there is less chance of being treated for prostate cancer and a longer wait time until treatment. So again, if African Americans are all going to these hospitals and these hospitals are less likely to treat prostate cancer and you're going to wait longer, then potentially that may explain the difference in outcomes. Um, finally, like I said, uh, because it's a short presentation, uh, you know, what's left? You know, if it's not uh, access to care issues and it's not patient beliefs or cultural differences, what's left is really provider level factors or what you would call either explicit racism or implicit bias. And like I said, most of us hope that we're not racist, but there is definitely some implicit biases in how we treat patients. This is probably the most provocative and interesting paper on the topic, and it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In this paper, there was a clear-cut scenario where a bunch of cardiologists agreed that with this description, the patient should be immediately referred to the cat lab for emergent catheterization. And, but however, in this study, what they did is they gave the scenario, the same scenario, to different patients of different race and different gender and asked them to read the scenario to experts and see what they would do with the patient. And what they found in this study is that if you were a woman, and or you were black, you were less likely to be referred to the cat lab than if you were a man and or you were white. And again, this is the same scenario, just read by different people of different race and gender, yet depending on your gender or your race, you may or may not get the correct assessment for that patient. And this is a good example of what we call implicit bias because, you know, there's no other real explanation for this. And, and finally, the, the one thing I will tell you, and which I fi also find really curious, is this is a paper we published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute a couple of years ago. And we found that Asian Americans have basically better survival across most cancers than white uh, individuals in the United States. And uh, what I think we should conclude from the findings of this study is that, as you know, Asian Americans who have immigrated to the United States are typically richer, more educated than the typical American or white American. And I think that that, again, really reflects the differences in education and income and how it affects cancer outcomes rather than race. Because I don't think that when this paper was published, nobody was seriously saying, oh, well, Asians have superior genes and therefore that's why they have better outcomes. But why do we say that about African American when it's, uh, we're talking about their cancer survival? And I think that's quite uh, curious as well. So uh, in summary, as I said, there's a gap in survival between African American and white patients. And uh, however, I think that the, the biological difference may not be as prevalent as we think they are. And the, real rea the reality is that it's more difference in terms of access to care, as I have tried to show you. And I think in the future, the focus, or at least some of the focus, need to be directed in trying to provide equity between African Americans and white patients, rather than trying to focus too much on genetic differences that may explain part, but is probably not the center, the gist of the problem. Um, so if you remember the title of my presentation, it was differences or disparity. Differences is something that is objective. When I de describe the data, I show that African American have worse survival than white patients, and that's a difference. Disparity implies that there's some sort of social injustice and, or inequity. And I think that it is pretty clear from my presentation that this is a problem of disparity rather than pure biological difference. Thank you.